Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a rational equation with complex numbers. So we have z plus i divided by z squared plus 1 which is equal to z and we're going to go ahead and solve for z values. So how do you solve an equation like this? First of all it's a rational equation so we need to make sure a couple things. We can't have a zero in the denominator, so let's make sure z squared plus 1 does not equal zero. Good. Now, the second thing we need to do, or we can do, is cross multiply. Let's go ahead and multiply z by z squared plus 1, and that equals z plus i. Now, let's go ahead and distribute z cubed plus z equals z plus i. Well, that was nice, don't you think? Because in this case, z cancels out. And when z cancels out, you end up with z cubed equals i. What is that supposed to mean? It means we have a simple equation. So we're basically looking for a number z. By the way, if you're new to complex numbers, go ahead and check out my lecture videos. If you like number theory, algebra, trigonometry problems, go ahead and check out my other channel, Cyber Math, Cyber with an S. Okay, so we're basically looking for a number whose cube is i. Can we find it? Yeah, in the polar form, thanks to Euler, it's very easy to do. So first of all, notice that i can be plotted on the complex plane. That would be like 0 plus 1i. In other words, this is the same as plotting 0 comma 1 as a point. So it'll be right here. And it will make so we got to connect it to the origin, and it'll make a pi over 2 radian, which is considered the principal argument for this number, okay? The reason why we call the principal argument is because we're allowed to add multiples of 2 pi to it, however many you want, okay? But we're, we're, we're going to stick to pi over 2 for now. So let's go ahead and replace i with that and by the way any complex number can be written as r times e to the i theta r is the modulus or the absolute value and theta is the argument we just talked about so in other words i can be written as one which is its modulus one unit away from zero times e to the power i times pi over two okay that is the principal argument the principal value and we're going to have z cubed equals that, right? So we kind of need to think about it. A complex number has three cube roots. Why? Because you can come up with three angles. When you triple them, uh, they're going to have the same value pretty much, okay? So how do we account for that? So we can go ahead and actually add multiples of 2 pi to this, like that. And that'll basically take care of the rest, okay? So the next thing would be dividing everything by, by the way, okay, uh, I don't know why I wrote pi over 3, that should be a pi over 2, yep, okay, not pi over 3. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to raise both sides to the power 1 third, which is basically dividing everything by 3. So z would be e to the power i times pi over 6 plus 2 pi n divided by 3. There's a couple different ways to write it. doesn't really matter. You can also make a common denominator if you want and write it that way. Now, if n is equal to 0 from here, z is going to be e to the power i times pi over 6. By the way, we can use Euler's formula both ways. So we can go ahead and turn this into something like this, cosine of pi over 6 plus i times sine pi over 6. And if you know the values, hopefully you do, cosine 30 degrees, that would be root 3 over 2, and this would be 1 half, which is sine 30, so we would get root 3 over 2 plus 1 half of i. So is that a solution? That's a good question. You can definitely go ahead and plug it in and test it out. I'm not necessarily saying it is, we need to check. Why do we need to check? Because first of all, you need to make sure the denominator isn't zero. Second, we need to make sure that it is the it satisfies the original equation, okay? So, what happens if n is equal to 1? Then we get z equals e to the power. By, by the way, there's an easy way to handle this. Since you're going to be splitting the two, um, 360 degrees into three pieces, every angle is going to be separated. That's my cat, by the way. Sorry about that. 
just, they're just chasing each other, two cats. Anyways, um, they're gonna be 120 degrees apart. So since this is uh, 30, you're gonna add another, um, so pi over six, you're gonna be adding another two pi over three to it, which is from here, you know, same idea. That will be five pi over six, okay? And five pi over six is basically just pi over six short of pi. So it's kind of like this, something like that. And if you look at the cosine and sine values, uh, you'll get the idea. Let me show you what that's gonna look like. Cosine of five pi over six is gonna be negative because you're in the second quadrant. It's gonna be negative root three over two, but the sine is still positive and that will be one half i. Okay, cool. That's just another solution. And for n equals two, you should find the third one. And again, by adding another two pi over three, which is four pi over six, you end up with nine pi over six, which is actually three pi over two. So that's exactly here. And you can tell that these are 120 degrees apart, just like the Mercedes, right? And this will become e to the power i times three pi over two. Some people write this as negative pi over two, which is fine, but we're not really concerned about it because we're only interested in the cosine and sine values. Cosine here is a zero and sine is a negative one. So this is just gonna be negative i. This is the most interesting one. Now we're gonna go back and check it out. And we'll start with the third one because that's the most interesting one. Let me rewrite the original problem. This was our original, oops, that should be a one, not an i. So like this, okay. And this is equal to z. Great. Now, if z is equal to negative i, as you should know, z squared is i squared, which is negative 1, because i squared is negative 1, or i is the square root of negative 1. But if z squared is negative 1, Houston, we have a problem that can't be happening. And remember the, uh, the issue that I tackled at the very beginning? I said that, okay, z squared plus 1 should never be 0. That's why it's helpful to take note of these things. So this is not going to work. This solution is problematic. What about the other ones? They don't seem to be causing an issue, at least for the denominator, because when you square them, they're not gonna become negative one. You get the idea? Because their cube is an integer, their square is not. Okay, great, so they should work, but if you wanna test them out, be my guest and do it and let us know what you think, because I'm just being lazy all the time. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the second method because I think the second method, hopefully you're gonna like it. And if you do, please let me know. So here's how the second method works. And this kind of explains why z equals negative i is problematic. Now, notice that sum of two squares cannot be factored in the real world, but in the complex world, it can be factored like what? a squared plus b squared can be factored into a plus bi multiplied by a minus pi. And this is amazing because it allows you to factor sum of two squares. So from here, we can write the z squared plus one as z plus i times z minus i because i squared is negative one, you see? It's like difference of two squares that turns into a sum of two squares. Now we can get rid of these two things, taking note that z should not equal negative i and then just go with this equation. Well, this equation is not necessarily very easy to solve because when you this, well, it's kind of easy. Z squared minus IZ is equal to one. And then you get something like Z squared minus IZ minus one equals zero. Guess what? This is quadratic. That'll be fun to solve. Let's do it. Negative B plus minus the square root of B squared, which is negative one. I squared is negative one, remember that? Minus four AC, that'll be plus four with the double negation from here. And then all of that is divided by two. And again, we come up with the same solution, z equals i plus minus root three over two. And as before, root three over two plus one half i or negative root three over two plus one half i. Notice that the imaginary part is not changing. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time in another video. Until then, be safe, take care. Don't forget to check out Cybermath and A plus BI and bye bye.